Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be talking about the update that nearly killed Borderlands 3. Borderlands 3 wasn't always in the quality state that it is now, it had quite the bumpy ride, and there was one update in particular that almost completely destroyed it. Now, I'm not talking about the large amount of early nerfs, the teeny tiny level cap increases, or the tumultuous launch of the Guardian takedown, there was something else, something much bigger, that changed the game as we knew it, and almost stopped it in its tracks. That's what we'll be covering today, and I'll be letting you know what exactly happened, and everything that was done to fix it. And don't forget to let me know in the comments what you were thinking when this update launched. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to, or you could even follow me on Twitter, and let's crack into it. Borderlands 3 is a game that constantly evolved throughout its first two years. We got patches that improved dedicated drop farming, introduced takedowns or limited time events, added anointments, removed anointments, increased the maximum level cap, made additions to Guardian rank, and adjustments to the end game system, with plenty of quality of life changes in there too. Mayhem Mode is essentially Borderlands 3's end game, but without the Avengers. At launch, there were three Mayhem levels accessed after completing the game from within the Mayhem console aboard Sanctuary 3. Increasing Mayhem levels would increase your chance at loot, but also enemy health, shields and armor, and apply a few random modifications. Mayhem 4 came a little after launch, alongside the Maliwan takedown, and brought with it some Mayhem 4 exclusive weapons. It was at this point that the game was perfectly balanced, as all things should be, but then Doctor Strange gave Thanos the Time Stone, which led to the 5 year blip, also known as Mayhem 2.0, which completely rewrote the entire endgame system. Launched on April 23rd, 2020, alongside the Revenge of the Cartel's limited time event, Mayhem 2.0 brought with it 10 brand new Mayhem levels, 28 brand new Mayhem modifiers with varying difficulty levels, and a complete disregard for balancing. Out of the more than 150 legendary weapons of the time, only 5 of them were viable at the newfound peak of Mayhem 10, and without them you would struggle to even get close. Those included the Monarch, the Sandhawk, the Kalsin, OPQ System, and Yellow Muffin, I mean Cake, weapons that were just introduced and half of them dropping on Mayhem 6 or higher. Not only did you have to refarm your weapons due to the newly added Mayhem weapon scaling making all your gear useless, but the weapons you were using couldn't even cut it at the top level if you were to farm them again. It was quite buggy too, weapons wouldn't display their Mayhem level so you'd have to use your Brian to figure it out, and sometimes Mayhem Zero gear would drop regardless of what Mayhem level you were on. It completely destroyed the status quo, and that's not even mentioning what happened to Iron Bear, Zane's clone, Flax Pets, any action skill, melee damage, grenade damage, or Squidward's hopes and dreams. Build diversity was in tatters, you had to swim between an extremely tight pair of flags, and if you didn't, you'd drown. It's not like we didn't know what was going to happen, we did, we knew about Mayhem 2.0 for a long time, and could foresee the issues to come. This reddit post posted literally two days before Mayhem 2.0 told of these issues, like an oracle from the land of sand, but no one from Gearbox listened, or perhaps it was already too late. After its launch, the game was in such a poor state, with community backlash hitting quickly. Countless people voiced their concerns over the Mayhem 2.0 fiasco, and how it affected the game they loved. People had a right to feel that way, it ruined the game, erasing everything they worked towards up until that point, like it never happened. Everything Gearbox did moving towards Mayhem 4's launch was now gone, and it felt like the end game was starting all over again. It was so bad that I even made a video about it with some suggestions to fix it, and I don't normally do that. The whole time this was going on though, Gearbox were listening, releasing a hotfix the very next week, which improved the drop rates of legendaries and anointments in Mayhem mode. To Gearbox's credit, they knew the changes didn't sit well with the community, and they were gathering feedback and engaging with fans every step of the way, which I feel is something severely lacking in Wonderlands. 
A few weeks after the release of Mayhem 2.0, after they had time to collate their findings and work out a resolution, they released a dev note titled Fine Tuning Mayhem 2.0 which discussed the issues they had identified and a planned phased approach they would implement to address them. Never have I seen a company do that, honestly admitting one's mistakes can be tough, especially when it's something you've worked so hard on and I have to pay my respects to Gearbox for how they handled the situation. It would take just under 2 months on June 11, 2020 for the next patch to arrive and the first phase to be given the green light. That's a long time to wait, but players stuck with it because they knew there was more to come, they knew things would get better, and that's how you keep a good relationship with your community. In the first phase of the Mayhem 2.0 fixes, Mayhem levels 7, 8, 9 and 10 had their stat bonuses reduced for health, shields and armor, from 12,500% to 10,000%, and the curve from level 7 to 10 was adjusted accordingly. Various SMGs were buffed and some of the outperforming weapons were nerfed to help regain equilibrium. However, the damage was already done and the effects of the Mayhem 2.0 update would ripple throughout Borderlands 3 till the very end. Although Mayhem scaling was applied to many other areas of the game two weeks later, culminating with the launch of DLC 3, the overall game balance was never the same again. The list of viable weapons consistently grew, with Bounty of Blood really kicking off the comeback for Borderlands 3, with a great DLC jam packed with top tier weaponry which no other content pack surpasses as far as I'm concerned. You have the Root, the Flipper, the Light Show, the Beacon, all of these guns added to the variety and set us on the path for unparalleled weapon diversity that no other Borderlands game can come close to. It seemed like every week after the final phase had been completed we'd get a buff to a select set of weapons, then another the next week and another the next. This was Gearbox essentially transferring them from the Mayhem 1.0 basket to the Mayhem 2.0 basket and it took over a year to complete. Mayhem 2.0 launched on April 23rd 2020 and our last batch of targeted weapon buffs came out on the 5th of August 2021. That's over 15 months later. They buffed the Echo, Embrace the Pain, the Hive, Vosk's Death Grip and the Chandelier. 80% of these were around when Mayhem 2.0 launched and it took over a year for them to reach their new Mayhem 2.0 state. That's simply papayas and just shows you how much work needed to be done. In fact over its entire lifespan according to Seraphaz who collated all of the hotfix and patch notes into this neat little spreadsheet. It turns out that Borderlands 3 received a whopping 384 buffs and just 47 nerfs. 238 of those buffs came after Mayhem 2.0 and only 16 nerfs which shows you just how deep a rift it caused. I'm glad they kept working to fix it though because it resulted in the bounty of viable weapons we have now, which is essentially 95% of all legendaries. That is amazing and gives Borderlands 3 some serious replay value which is all thanks to Mayhem 2.0. Mayhem 2.0 is also the reason why only a select amount of purple weapons are viable on Mayhem 10 and why pre-end game Borderlands 3 is a literal walk in the park as any decent legendary can easily carry you from level 10 all the way up to level 30. Pre Mayhem 2.0 was the peak when it came to balancing for Borderlands 3 through level 1 all the way up to level 50. Mayhem 2.0 squashed that but eventually gave us more worthwhile legendaries than we could ever have hoped for, and I'm perfectly happy with how it turned out. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the update that nearly killed Borderlands 3, how close it came to death and what was done to revive it. If you did consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.